guys, welcome to Cosplay Life. I'm Air Bear, and today we are finally going over step six, the final step of the cosplay armor making process. And this step is adding attachments so that you can actually wear your armor. So this step came a year after I initially started the project, like I just did it a couple of weeks ago and it has been a struggle. It took me a while to figure out the right way to add attachments and to figure out an attachment design that I wanted for this armor that I thought went with it and I thought would be comfortable and would look good. It just, it took me a while and I kind of got distracted by other projects. And then I eventually came back to this a year later and here we are. But there was a lot of trial and error, like trying to figure out a way to get an attachment that worked. So you'll see some of that, but we wanted to, this video not to be super confusing. So we kind of kept most of what we actually went with as our final in the video. But something that I've noticed a lot of videos have is they don't really show you the process of trying to figure things out. And so, um, we're starting to go more toward that with some of the videos that you may see in the future it is not necessarily like this is how you do it, but more this is what happened and this is how I figured it out and this is how I got to where we are. So um, anyway, this video is kind of like a transition into those next set of videos and that set of videos will be called The Road to Dragon Con which we'll explain more about that in that video. Anywho, here we are with this video with adding the attachments. Also, apparently there was something in my teeth for most of the video, so I am sorry. So anywho, we finally got it together. So stay tuned for step six of the armor making process and adding the straps. The materials I used are leather slash pleather, quilters clips. I think they're quilters clips. You find them in the quilter section, so I would imagine that they're quilters clips. One inch D-rings, black fabric hot glue. I used black because it matched my felt. Next, let's go over what you'll need for gluing in the felt. I accidentally glued it in too early. It should actually be the last thing you do. So ignore the felt when you see it already glued in. Okay, so you will need the felt that you cut in step two, which you could also cut in this step. Fabric Mod Podge. Brush for glue. I use the Mod Podge short bristle brush. You can also use those disposable foam spongy brushes, but you'll probably have to throw it away once you're done. And your gauntlets. So first thing is, first things first is to make some of the strap. So I cut my fabric about an inch and a half thick so you can fold it over and go sew it on the sewing machine until you have an inch. So I'm going to go get my clips. So when you're sewing things like leather, fake leathers and things that if you put a hole in it, it will show up, um, you can use these little quilters clips. I think they're quilters clips, but whatever. You can find them in the quilting section of Joann's. And you can use these to hold your fabric instead so that they don't leave little holes in your fabric. I am using my mat to help me line everything up. So I'm gonna fold it in so I only have an inch of fabric left. I don't do what I'm doing very often. Like make something exactly one inch long. I feel like I should probably go ahead and sew this side, but here we are. Not doing that. See, it's too small on this side because the other side's too big. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I will tell you what. I'm gonna do all of one side first and then do the other. So I'm gonna fold this side in 
and then I'm gonna sew it and then I'm gonna fold the other side to make it one inch. All right, that's what we're gonna do. Make it easier for us. All right, so I lined up my sewed edge and for my sewed, my edge I already sewed, I just eyeballed it and then I used the presser foot to kind of measure. I think that is maybe one quarter, one, one eighth of an inch maybe. I think that's one eighth of an inch from the edge, from that folded edge. So I lined that up with that line and then I used my clips to kind of get the rest of it. It doesn't need to be exact, but if I'm going to guess, I need to under guess because it needs to fit into that ring. So now I'm going to go sew over here and I'm gonna to try to sew one eighth of an inch away from the edge again, just like I did on that side. And the bad thing about these clips is they get caught on stuff. They're really bulky. Yep. Sometimes I know when my machine's about to get caught. That was one of those times. I just knew she was gonna get caught and come up with a name for her. It's definitely a her. Feels like a her. She feels kind of finicky sometimes too. Hmm. Like a strong personality, a strong female, like Ray. Cora? Or do I need a name that starts with an S? Selena Kyle. <laughs> Selena Kyle might work. Actually, you know what? Selena Kyle is going to be perfect because one, it starts with an S, like sewing, but also because Selena Kyle was, when I was little, she sewed. Um, I watched that really good Batman. And she sewed her um, cat suit. And I remember that vividly from when I was little. Because I guess stuff like that. It was like, oh, of course, everybody sews. <laughs> so I think Selena Kyle will be the name of that thing. All right, I have my strap. So the next step is to go ahead and sew this, not sew this, glue this into our thing. All right, so my thought is with buckling, that I'm going to want to buckle this way. Buckles be over here, I buckle and pull it back. All right, so let's just go ahead and do the D-ring side because it will be easiest. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna sew it onto this, Sew it on the sewing machine right there. And you need two D rings. So I'm going to go sew it. I'm gonna sew a couple of them since I'm over there. I need one, two, three. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so I have my little straps. All I did was just encase them in there and then sew on. So now I'm gonna glue it to here. <laughs> now I'll add the straps. All right, I'm gonna fold that under. I'm gonna sew them. I'm gonna sew this one too. I'm going to glue this one first. All right, so, all right. These straps are too long. And I figured I could just fold them over. So I'm gonna fold them over. I'm gonna sew them folded over. And then I'm gonna use that as my strap. So that way it's double sided. Yeah. Let me try again before I sew it. 
Yeah, yeah, it'll work. Okay, so I'm going to actually sew it like that. So I'm just folding in half, making the other half match. And then I'm going to sew as far as I can along here, maybe along there too, and along there. And then I'm going to glue the rest down with fabric hot glue for each of these. So sew and then glue. So sew, then glue. So, tried to sew the straps. I sewed the first strap, I sewed the second strap, got onto the third strap, and my sewing machine broke. Like, like it's, you know, it's kind of been upset at times. I've usually take, been able to take it apart, clean it, and it would be okay. But it's completely broken. Like, it seems like the timing it's off. I've never had a broken sew. I mean, I've had sewing machines that have been physically broken, like the lever for the presser foot has broken, but I've never had a sewing machine like just completely, like something is physically wrong with it, with the way it sews. So, I mean, I could fabric glue this, but I kind of want to sew it because I sewed all the other ones. And I was going to fabric glue that part because I can't sew that far. Hmm. Part of me wants to just go ahead and fabric glue it. But I also don't want to fabric glue it because it's like, then the machine won. <laughs> After I just gave her a name too. It feels, I feel exposed not having my sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue the parts of these straps that I can glue. And we'll just, we might just pretend like we're done. <laughs> okay, let's just go ahead and finish this up. Oh, and now is the time you glue in the felt. The time is now. So this is old footage from when I glued in the felt the first time, which was a mistake. You will follow the same steps for gluing it now. First, I put glue on the foam using the short bristle brush. Next, I place my cut felt on top, starting from the center and kind of rolling it out. Once it's dry, cut off your excess felt. You can actually cut it smaller to begin with when you're cutting it using the template. Just cut it a little bit smaller than the template. Just make sure you don't cut it too small so that you don't have too much foam touching your skin. Ugh. It's hard with the hot glue in there. Just another reason not to use hot glue. Don't use hot glue if you don't have to. Just, just sew it. All right, cool beans. It's done. I have a done gauntlet. <laughs> So that about does it for how I finish off making this gauntlet and adding the attachments. If you have any comments or questions about anything that you saw in this video, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. The project that we have coming up next is the Road to Dragon Con videos, which will be more vlog style and more um what happened rather than this is how you do it it's more of a like a, this is just how this came along sort of deal series thing so if you would like to see those make sure you hit subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get a notification for when those videos come out other than that i will catch you all next time on the road to dragon con Deuces! Bye. So goofy.